Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. So in today's video I wanted to do a review on the brand newly released Alleyoop Sensational Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. So this is the very first time ever that I'm trying a product by this brand. I honestly had no idea about this brand at all, but I did find this product while I was browsing on the internet and I thought it would be really interesting to actually review the sunscreen because summer has officially started. It is boiling hot outside and you know, sunscreen protection should go for all year round, but especially in the summer, I feel like a little bit of extra protection is a really good idea. And this is a tinted sunscreen, like a skin tint sort of foundation product with a mineral SPF of 50. And if you are interested, last year I actually did an entire ranking video of all of the foundation slash skin tints that contain a mineral SPF. I'm going to be linking that video down below in my description box. I'm also going to add it to like the end of my video, you know. I'm just gonna put it there so if you want to watch that afterwards, you can just simply click on it. It's a really good video to refer to because I really have tried out so, so many foundations and skin tints with an SPF with a mineral sort of sun protection in it, right? So I'm actually really excited for today's video because I'm gonna be looking at how is this product applying? What is in this product? What are the claims of this product? You know, what is the coverage level of this product? And of course, how well is this performing? So I really hope this is gonna give you an in-depth review on this product. Just know if you are curious what else is on my face, I'm also going to link all of that in my description box alongside with some affiliate links and some discount codes. And in case you do enjoy today's video, why not give it a like? Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming content. You guys know that is very much appreciated and I would advise you to actually stick around until the end of today's video because I'm gonna come back with some check-ins and with a wear test because I really wanna see how well this product is actually performing. Also, please do just bear in mind that this is solely my opinion about the product. Take this with a grain of salt because, you know, this is just my personal experience. And just in case you have tried out this product or in case you have tried out anything else by this brand, please do drop me a comment down below and share with me your experience because I only have got this product by the brand. I don't have anything else. So are you actually interested in the brand or not? I would really appreciate it if you could leave me some feedback down below. But all right, you guys, without no further ado, I would say let's just go ahead, let's go barefaced and let's start reviewing this one. All right, you guys, so I'm barefaced right now. So before we are kicking it off with the review on the tinted sunscreen, I actually just wanted to mention that I've already put on some SPF about like maybe an hour ago. I did put on the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Airfit Sun Cream Light SPF 30. So just in case you were looking for an amazing K-Beauty option in terms of mineral sunscreens, because it's very hard to find a K-Beauty mineral sunscreen. I feel like, you know, there are maybe like a handful of sunscreens and that's about it. But this one is just so, so stunning and I've really been enjoying this one. Since I tried this out for the very first time, I've been constantly reaching for this. This is also really cool and uh, convenient with the pump. So you can travel with this. It's really easy. It fits in your handbag to reapply the sunscreen. It's just really, really good. And the texture of this, it's very lightweight. Now, when you apply this at first, you know you are gonna get a little bit of this like whiteness to your skin. I would not call this a white cast though because this does not leave a white cast. It really does sink in. And after like five minutes, the white cast has completely disappeared and it's really enjoyable on your face. It's not over the top greasy. It also has a dry down, so it's not gonna leave a tack or anything. I feel like this is a very elegant mineral formula and I know I really have to make a video on all of these sunscreens that I've been testing out, but this one is definitely one of my favorite ones. I would definitely recommend this if you are looking for a more affordable K-Beauty option. This one is also completely fragrance free. Um, it retails for around $18, which is a really good price point. I feel like it's just such a fantastic sunscreen option. It has 50 milliliters of product in here as well. But I know you guys have not clicked onto this video 
uh, for me to review a sunscreen. I just wanted to have mentioned that I put this on prior to filming. And as you can see, my skin is still a little bit radiant. That's basically from this product. I feel like it's not over the top radiant though. I have definitely had some other experiences with sunscreens that had left my skin like more luminous than this one. So I do feel like it's a really good one and you know, I can't feel it on my skin whatsoever. I would definitely suggest this one. It's really, really good. And I'm gonna link it in my description box down below. And if you do wanna pick this up on Stylvana, I'm not sure if they have it in stock right now, but if you do wanna try out some other K-Beauty, I will always link my discount code for Stylvana, which is my favorite K-Beauty retailer in the world. And I feel like they've got the best price points and I actually picked this one up on Stylvana as well. So, you know, I'm going to leave the details in my description box to this product, but let's actually move on to the hero product of today's video. And that is the Ali Oop Sensational Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. And this one retails for $30. Here is the box. I just kept it in the box. I've already tried this product out once. So today is my second impression of the product. Uh, I definitely have to make up my mind if I like this or not, but we shall be finding that out in today's video, okay? There are a couple of things that I do want to mention before I'm putting this onto my face. Now, this is the very first time I've ever tried out this brand. This was quite a spontaneous purchase. And I really just wanted to give this a go, you know. I really wanted to see if I would like it. There are definitely some pros and some cons for me personally when it comes to this product. But let's just have a look at the details. What is this product? How many shades are there? And so forth. So people ranked this 5 out of 5 out of 42 reviews as of right now. I don't think I would give this like necessarily a 5 out of 5, but we'll get to that. So this product actually comes in 12 different shades. I've got this in the shade Glisten, and that is the fourth lightest shade. So it's a light with neutral balanced undertones. 12 shades, it's kind of like a limited shade range. So I'm not sure if you would find your perfect undertone. So 100% mineral sunscreen that serves up a radiant tint and high SPF 50 without that white chalky residue. So this is gonna give you a hydrated glow year round with patent pending technology that protects from 99% of UV radiation. This shields from both UVA and UVB rays, um, quenches skin and hydrates on impact with niacinamide. Now I will say niacinamide might not be like the most hydrating sort of ingredient that there could be. I feel like niacinamide is more of like a balancing sort of skincare ingredient. To some people, niacinamide in a very high percentage like could even be drying. So I don't know how much percentage there is in here. So there's no claim about the percentage of niacinamide in here, which I find always very important. Two to five percent, you know, shows the best results. And if you do want to like, you know, balance your oil production, I would go with a 10 percent. Anything above 10 percent can be like a little bit more drying. And it's also not very like cosmetically like elegant to be honest with you so i'm not sure about this statement being completely accurate anyway minimizes redness and strengthens skin's moisture barrier with jojoba asters skin is visibly softer and smoother with more bounce and hydration contains larger particles non-nano which to me is very important like non-nano particles in a mineral sunscreen because if it's a nano one, they might be able to penetrate your bloodstream. Honestly, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm just saying like it's always better to like, you know, get a non nano mineral sunscreen. Um, so it contains larger particles that protect the surface of the skin without sinking into it and then all the ocean. All right. Buildable light to medium coverage. Dermatologist tested and non comedogenic doesn't clog pores. 12 flexible shades with a natural finish, vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free, gluten-free, and travel-friendly. So just looking at this ingredient list, the active ingredient, the mineral sunscreen, is zinc oxide at 12%. This does not contain any oils, it does not contain any essential oil or any sort of fragrance at all, and it also really does not contain any sort of alcohol. The only thing is that this one does have a couple of silicones, also including dimethicone. Now, I I personally don't mind that but I do know that some of you don't do well with silicone so I just thought I would mention that. So here is the packaging. It does come in like a tube with a squeeze nozzle which I kind of like. Uh, it's very sort of like you know 
travel friendly as well. So I've used this product already once prior to filming and you know I'm a little bit split if I really like it and that's due to the texture and to the finish. Um, also the coverage level. We've got to like really analyze this. How well is this covering up my skin? I did use this on a dampened sponge and I really want to use it on a brush today because I feel like this is working maybe a little bit better with a brush than with a sponge. But okay, I'm just going to clip back my hair. And because the sunscreen actually has a little bit of silicone in here, I'm actually going to use a little bit of a primer though because I kind of want to blur out like my pores just slightly. So I'm going to use my beloved Cover FX Blurring Primer. Just, you know, a little bit on the spots where my sunscreen has left me super shiny. All right, I do feel a little bit less shinier right now because you guys may know I don't like to shine. I really don't like it. And I feel like this one, it's gonna like give me like a really radiant finish. I'm just gonna give that away straight away. I'm gonna like shake this up because as you can hear, it's quite a runny and liquidy formula. So runny, just look at that. Also the shade Glisten that I've got is described as a light with neutral balanced undertones. So I'm just gonna do this swipe right here. You can see it's very peachy in my opinion. I feel like this is such a peachy shade. So let's use a brush to spread this out a little bit. So this is with just a little bit of the product and you can tell, I mean, it has definitely balanced out my skin tone quite a lot. Just looking at myself right now, Honestly, I don't think this is the perfect shape match though. I feel like it's quite peachy. I kind of need more of like a neutral leaning cool undertone. It's kind of like radiant and luminous, you know? Uh, so if that's a natural finish for them, maybe I feel like I look like almost like sweaty wet. Very luminous to be honest with you. But let's continue. Now the texture of this is very lightweight. So this is just with one layer. I can tell you this has a very sort of light coverage. It does not really even out everything on my skin the way I would want it. And it's very almost like uneven, you know, the coverage. Like I feel like it has not really covered this part of my face that well. It has covered this part great. On my forehead it's okay, but I just feel like there is something about this product where it just looks so like luminous and borderline dewy and for some reason that just does not look good on my skin type. I could never walk out of the house just like that. I would have to put on some powder because otherwise I would look like sweaty and greasy, you know, and it's a very fine line between glowy, like naturally glowy, like some beautiful hydrated skin and just looking straight up like like you have done like a workout for five hours, you know what I mean? Let's do another layer and I feel like the um, brush definitely does give me a lot more coverage than the very first time when I used this with a sponge. That was not a great idea. Um, I will say though the texture, it feels very lightweight, it kind of feels really lovely on the skin, but yeah, the brush is definitely the way to go. Or your fingers maybe. I'm not a finger application girl so I don't really like that at all. But yeah with the brush on the second layer I feel like now it's giving me a little bit more coverage you know. But it's also giving me a lot more of that dewiness um, which is normal because the more product you're gonna use the more your skin is just kind of looking super glowy. I'm so sorry, you know, I feel like I look like I've been sweating. It reminds me of the Say Slip Tint, like the one that was slipping around on my skin that made me kind of like look like this as well. And I just don't like it. I don't like the finish. Uh, the coverage, to be honest, though, is okay. I just feel like it does not sit very well on my nose and I don't feel like this has a proper dry down whatsoever. I feel like this is just gonna 
sort of like sit around on your skin. I will like put on a concealer right now and I'm going to uh, also put a little bit of an eye primer, do my eyebrows and then I'm gonna be back uh, powdering this because I really want to see how it's working. Once I've powdered it down maybe it's a little bit better because like this I would not dare to go out like that, really not. Alright you guys, so I literally put something underneath my eyes. I used the Jane Iredale a Light and Plus Under Eye Concealer. This one actually has SPF 30, it's also mineral. So I kind of just wanted to use these two together and I put a little bit of my Sigma Eye Primer on top of my eyelids. Um, that one is looking so pink now compared to the rest of my face, but just look at that. I mean, this is not gonna dry down. If I would touch my face, the whole thing is gonna come off. It's gonna come off, it's not transfer proof. I'm just gonna use my beloved Levera Invisible Finish Loose Powder. It's such a good one, it's kind of blurring, it's kind of perfecting and also a little bit mattifying. All right, so let's actually do one side of my face and then let's compare it to an unset sort of side. That is such a striking difference, isn't it? I mean, I've got to say this powder is also really, really good in just mattifying like my foundations without drying my skin out. And this just looks so different. I feel like normal again, but for the life of me, I, I just could not like deal with this sort of finish ever. I just don't like it. This powder is just so excellent. So I'm gonna like put a powder also on the other side of my face. This powder always saves the day and it's just such a big huge difference now. I will say though, I have to turn on the light for a second here to just see it properly. It does not look very skin smoothing and also the coverage is a little bit off like especially around here i wish it would have a little bit more coverage all right but i'm going to finish my makeup i'm going to put on some bronzer some blush some highlighter a little bit of eyeshadow i'm going to link all of the products that i've been using in my description box down below as well in case you're curious um, but i just want to see how this is performing throughout my day so i might be coming back with a couple of check-ins you know just to see how well this is holding up and also how it's like working with some other products on top of this. Now I'm gonna go in with like powders, you know, I'm gonna go in with a powder bronzer, powder blush, powder highlighter. I'm not gonna like mess around with creams on this sort of like product necessarily. So I'll be back in a couple of hours for you. It's just gonna be like literally one second. Alright you guys, so I am back with my final check-in before I'm heading off to bed. It's quite late, I feel like I've got this makeup on for a solid 8 hours plus by now. And this is how it's looking right now. I mean, it is kind of looking a little bit shiny, okay? And it actually ended up not being that sunny today. It was kind of like humid outside, a little bit stuffy. Like it was kind of hot outside, but it was not very like sunny. Um, and I was not over the top physically active today, you know. I did a little bit of stuff around the house. Considering that I did not end up doing that much today, the makeup looks worn in. It still looks okay, it just got a little bit shiny. And I did not touch this makeup up at all, I just put my lip gloss on a couple of times throughout the day because I was eating, I was drinking and you know, sometimes my lip gloss just does not hold that well. So that's the only thing I was reapplying, but I did not apply any more powder to my face. And I feel like, I mean, does it look okay? It looks okay, you know, it's not the worst makeup, but it's also not the best makeup. I honestly feel like, especially around here, 
around my nose area and on my chin. Ooh, my chin is the one part where I would say this is not looking that great, okay? My cheeks are kind of manageable, but around here I feel like it's just on the verge of not looking that great. I will say though, whenever I was like doing this or like even like attempting to touch my face, which I'm always in my head, like, don't touch your face. So I really tried not to touch my face, but there were some moments where I might have like accidentally touched my face and my hands were full of makeup. So it's just not transfer proof. Like, look at that. That is like one thing that I feel like is a little bit of a negative point with this product. Does it make my skin look super like, you know, healthy and all of that? Yes. Is it the worst foundation I've ever tried? Definitely not. It's definitely not the worst like wear test I've ever done, but it's also not for my skin type, let's be real. Honestly, I don't think I've got the oiliest skin in the world. And you know, if I would not put on any sort of makeup, any kind of products onto my skin for a long period of time, my skin would actually get a little bit more dehydrated and it would also show kind of like some signs of surface dryness. So I do assume I've got a little bit more sort of like combo skin. I just wanted to throw that out because you may think like by looking at this that I've got really oily skin, but I don't. Uh, it really depends on what product I put on my skin. Another thing that I do want to mention though about this product in particular is something that I very rarely encounter. But it's the fact that my bronzer and my blush, they don't look very flattering. So I don't think that this product necessarily works well with like makeup on top of it. I really felt like my bronzer ended up looking really patchy. And this is a bronzer that I love and that has never done that to me. So I'm a little bit like confused by this area right here because I feel like it's just it looks like my skin did like, I'm not sure what happened here, but it looks like it's like patchy around here. So, and around here too. So I feel like it just does not look that great with makeup on top. So I'm just gonna use for the sake of the experiment, I'm just gonna use a little bit of powder and see what would happen if I would touch this product up, you know. So you can tell that when I use a little bit more powder, it's kind of looking okay again. I just feel like around here, around my nose kind of fold, it's, it's not really looking that great in there, you know. Honestly, I don't really like products that I have to constantly touch up. And I really felt like the breaking point with this one came after four hours. After four hours, I was feeling like I need to put powder on top of this again like this is like not looking great anymore you can tell that i'm shiny you can tell that i'm glowing and i don't really necessarily like that okay so but that's just me and i would be really curious to know if you have tried out this product and what your thoughts are so if you have tried it out please do drop me a comment down below you can also drop me a comment in case you have not tried it out of course you know uh, any comment is kind of welcome so i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you enjoyed the wear test and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you made it that far also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming content and until next time please do take care Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.